we present the distinguished American actor, Walter Hampton, in The Adventures of Leonidas Witherall. Leonidas Witherall's always getting mixed up in murders. You wouldn't think so to look at him. He looks just like Shakespeare. It's his beard. And he's the head of an important school for boys in New England. He also writes thriller stories on the side. The Lieutenant Hazeltine story. And to escape from this intense activity, Leonidas has just gone to the mountains for a brief rest. Uh, isn't that right, Mr. Hampton? Exactly. Mr. Witherall's close friend and valuable housekeeper for the neighborhood, Mrs. Mullet, went off to Dandy's Dream Domicile, a resort in the mountains where she's been combining work with pleasure. On the basis of her recommendation, Leonidas has gone there himself for a short vacation. But he hasn't been there more than a few minutes when, uh, standing on the porch with Mrs. Mullet, the calm of the mountainside is shattered by a fire alarm. There's a fire, Mr. Witherall. Why, it's that cabin right across the road, see it? Uh, yes, we'd better go over, Mrs. Mullet. We might be able to help. Oh, how far is the fire station, do you know? Oh, it's about five miles away. They probably won't get here for a long time. Hmm, pretty bad fire. wonder if anybody's in that cabin. Well, I can't see. It's kind of a flames. There is someone inside. It's a man. Good gracious. See him? He's just coming out. Yes. He looks weak, too. He's staggering here. Oh, please. Help me. Uh, that's all right. I've got hold of you. I think his other arm, Mrs. Mullet. No, no. I've got to go back inside. What diamonds in there? A diamond not worth risking your life for, man. Now just lie down on the ground. Oh, I've got to get my diamond. Where's the fortune? Fortune? There comes the crowd from the main house. They help. Oh. 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 Please, please, my diamond. It's in the top drawer of the dresser. It'll burn. All right. It's so important, I'll try. Look after Mrs. Mullet. I'm going into that cabin. No, wait. You'll be killed. Hey, where's that fellow going? Is he crazy? He's heading right for the fire. Wait, Mr. Witherall. Oh, look at the cabin. Well, it's hard to spot him with all those flames. Hey, what's going on here? Somebody caught him there? No, no one's in there. He went to get something. Well, it must be something valuable. I wouldn't go in there for a million dollars. Well, maybe that's what it's worth. What? What did you say? Nothing. You just keep moving those buckets. Did, did he go in? What's yes, happening? Yes, I see him. Come on, Mr. Witherall. Oh, Get up, Mr. Witherall, get up! He's okay, he's okay. Hey, wait, here he comes. Are you all right? What? Are you all right? I'm all right, yes. Overheated, but otherwise fine. Did you get my diamond? Yes, I did. Oh, I don't know. Oh, thank you. Here it is, Mr. Uh, Button. My name's Button. Uh, might we discuss this later, Mr. Button, in private? Because when I found your diamond, I made a startling discovery. Amazing, Mr. Button. Positively amazing. Mr. Button, uh, I went into your burning cabin, opened the top drawer of the dresser, and found what you described as your diamond. If I may ask, how much did you pay for this rare gem? Why? Oh, you said it was worth a fortune. I hope that was merely your excitement at the moment. I hope you didn't actually pay more than a few dollars. A few dollars? So happens I paid $30,000 for that diamond. Oh, pardon me for whistling. Uh, you see, I'm the director of a school, Mr. Button. We teach chemistry, among other things. I recall our chem professor telling a class once that uh, real diamonds being made of carbon will burn when subjected to fire. Are you trying to tell me that it's a fake? Glass, Mr. Button. Plain, ordinary glass. But, but that's impossible. I can appreciate how you feel. $30,000 for a piece of glass seems a little high, doesn't it? Uh, are you positive? Quite. Now, you should be more cautious when you go uh, shopping. Well, I'll ruin him. I'll kill him. Whom? I am Mr. Dandy. The manager of this uh, retreat? Hmm. Retreat. I wasn't supposed to tell anyone where I got this, but I will. I'll tell everybody under the sun, and I'm going to take him by the neck and I... No, 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 I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, perhaps Mr. Dandy made a mistake, eh? Uh, he's not the kind of a fellow who makes mistakes. I'll show him. Shall we be calm, Mr. Button? Uh, perhaps uh, if you talk it over I with him... I don't want to talk to him. I just want to get my hands on him. Uh, would it help if I spoke to him? I mean, if it'll prevent any violence... Well, you tell him. Well, if he realizes he's been caught selling a false diamond, he, he might prefer to return the money rather than uh, discuss it with the police. I don't want anybody to talk to him. I just want to see him dead. But you can't actually kill the man. You've got to solve this some other way. I'm not interested in other Mr. ways. Mr. Button. Oh, get out, Witherall. 
And keep your mouth shut. Interesting suggestion. Uh, but surely you're not going you to... Never mind what I'm going to do. Shall we be calm, Mr. Butler? Oh, no, get out! All right, I will. But before I go, I may tell you, I'm not going to leave this problem this way. What are you going to do? In your own words, Mr. Button, just you never mind what I'm going to do. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Weatherall? I came to your room, Mr. Dandy, to warn you. Warn me? Uh, yes, about that false diamond you sold to Mr. Button. Who said I ever sold him anything? Uh, now, there's no time for explanations. Unless he gets some sort of satisfaction, he's determined to kill you. To kill me? I knew that would interest you. That's why I'm here. Now, I thought perhaps I might serve as a mediator. With all, I think you're a phony. And so is this man Button. He hasn't a thing on me. And if you think I'm walking into a trap, you're crazy. I don't know anything about selling him diamonds. Play around with that. All right. At least I've tried. Didn't you come here for a nice, peaceful vacation? I did. Then mind your own crummy business or you'll get a nice, peaceful rest. A very long one. Rather a dull way to phrase your threat, Mr. Dandy. I was merely trying to pacify Mr. Button. Okay, and... you said your little piece. Just because you look like Shakespeare doesn't mean you ought to mastermind everything. Hmm, strikes me as very odd, Mr. Dandy, that someone should sell diamonds at a mountain resort rather than at a business office. Now, uh, isn't it possible you might be selling many types of diamonds? Uh, glass ones, stolen ones? You don't care much about what happens to you, do you? On the contrary. Then cut your vacation short with her all. Go home first thing in the morning. Keep your beard out of this. I certainly will not go home. This resort has been recommended to me. I came here for a vacation and I intend to stay. You do, huh? Absolutely. All right, you ask for trouble. Now you'll get it. Uh, Mrs. Mullins, what are you doing? Peeking through the keyhole of that room. Shh. Very interesting. What is it? In there. Oh, that's bad news. It's a man and his daughter. And what a fight they're having. Well, you shouldn't listen to family quarrels. How dare you say that, Loretta? How dare I? I'll say it again. I'm going to marry Phil Dandy, and I don't believe a word you say about him. Ah, uh, you don't think he's a crook, eh? All right. I didn't want to tell you this, but I will. Here comes the good part, Mr. Uh-huh. See this diamond, Loretta? Take a good look at it. It's genuine. I had it tested this afternoon. I paid $30,000 for it. Got it from your boyfriend, Dandy. But that diamond was stolen. He sells stolen goods. I don't believe it. He's what they call a fence. He uses this place as a headquarters. You're lying. You wouldn't buy a stolen diamond. And besides, Phil would never have anything to do with a crooked business like that. You're making up the whole story because you're jealous. You never thought any man was good enough for me. You've managed to get rid of every boy I ever liked. And you're desperate now. Because you know how much I love Phil. You'd say anything to stop us from being married. Then why don't you ask him about the diamond? Because I wouldn't even bother to repeat your crazy story. Then I'll bring him here myself. Oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> oh I, I beg your pardon. Uh, this door opens uh, very abruptly, doesn't it? Uh, listening in at my door, eh? Oh. And who are you? I'm terribly sorry. Uh, my name is Leonidas Witherall, and uh, this is Mrs. Mullet. Oh, I saw her before. She cleans our room. Hello. Eavesdropping, huh? I suppose, Witherall, you heard everything we said. Well, your tone was not exactly confidential. Uh, but since you ask, uh, I missed the early part. Hmm. Very amusing. Now I'll tell you something you didn't hear. You know too much. Mm -hmm. Somebody else told me that tonight. Called me a mastermind. You won't get a chance to butt in anymore, though. How's that? Oh, well, you'll find out. Come on, Loretta. Let's go downstairs. I'm coming. Good night with her all. Sleep well. Oh, thank you. I shall. I... Uh, what's that? Hurry, Loretta. Lock the door. Keyhole, kibitzer. Mind your tongue. Oh, come along, Mrs. Mullet. Uh, this next door is the door to my room, isn't it? Yes, yes, that's it. Now, where did I... Oh, uh, I have it here. here. Here's the key. I put fresh bedding on for you. Anything else you want before I go? Well, you might do a favor for me. I feel rather worn by all those fantastic doings. Uh, I'd like a cup of coffee. Well, I'll go down to the kitchen and get one for you. That's very kind of you, Mrs. Mullen. Be right back. All right, thank you. <sighs> Did he say sleep well? Mm. <sighs> Come in. Uh, peaceful vacation, very relaxing. Yes? Oh, it's you, Mr. Button. With her all, where's my letter opener? Give it to me. I don't know anything about a letter opener. When you went into my house at the fire, I think you helped yourself to a few of my things. 
That letter opener is a very valuable piece. It has a hand carved Persian base. It's made of the finest steel. Uh huh. With a lot of money with her all. Now give it back. I assure you, Mr. Button, I haven't the remotest idea where your letter opener is. I'll turn this room of yours upside down to find it. Well, oh, go ahead. I've never seen a room upside down. Oh, Mr. Mitterall. Oh, just a moment, Mrs. Mullet, please. Do I get the letter opener or do I call the police? Now, the gentleman I'm supposed to resemble was used to such melodramatic talk, but as for me... Don't get uppity with me. Uppity, uppity. But, Mr. Mitterall, I want to tell oh, you... stop putting in. Now, for the last time, Mr. Button, I don't know where that knife is. Now, uh, I wish you'd leave. Mr. Winterall, please. Don't interrupt now, please, Mrs. Muller. And for the last time, either you give it to me or I'll try looking for it myself. Well, you can turn this room topsy-turvy and you won't find that knife. I know where it uh, is. You know where it is? Yes, I do. Well, where is it? Downstairs in the kitchen. Then go down and bring it up. I can. Oh, why not? It's stuck in something. Hmm? Stuck in what? Mr. Dandy. What? No. It's in Mr. Dandy's back. He's been murdered, I guess. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you tell us about Dandy before? Well, I tried to, but you kept telling me not to interrupt. If he's been stabbed with your knife, Mr. Button, asking me for it as though it were lost was a miserable attempt to deceive me. I didn't kill him. Perhaps not. Uh, shall we go downstairs? I'm not afraid. Oh, admirable. Uh, come along, Mrs. Mullet. Uh, you know, she doesn't seem at all upset by this. Uh, you two could be in cahoots. You might have spoken to Mr. Dandy before this... Oh, I never get upset when I find a dead body. I found so many of them. What? Well, whenever I'm with Mr. Witherall, we always find one. He's always getting mixed up in murders. Oh, he is, is he? That's quite a character reference. Well, Mr. Witherall's quite a character. Ah, thank you, Mrs. Mallet. Now, Mr. Button, shall we go downstairs and see your letter opener? Lost objects turn up in the most curious places, don't they? <laughs> Yes, uh, officer. Um, one hour? All right, thank you. Goodbye. What does the police say? Is it going to take them one hour to get here? Well, fortunately, yes. Uh, the nearest police station is almost 40 miles away. Besides, he says there was an accident on the road and it will be blocked for some time. You mean we're all supposed to sit here? Uh huh. Dandy's body lying on the floor in the kitchen? Mm-hmm. Just sit here for an hour? Well, if you don't have to stay, Mr. Wick, I imagine it'd be all right to turn to your room. Ooh, isn't there anything we can do? No. Uh, simple fact is that the dandy is dead, was murdered, killed by a knife thrown through the window from quite a distance. Hmm. Well, when the police arrive, they'll find out who the killer is, and uh, that will be that. <laughs> What are you doing that for, Witherall? The playing beanbags? Oh, just for fun. You seem pretty cool, Witherall. Oh, I don't see any reason to be excited, Mr. Button. Do you? With a murder staring everybody in the face? Somebody in this room's a killer, and you're just standing there uh, tossing those silly beanbags into that hat. Moments of tension, I find it relaxes me to do uh, something like uh, playing beanbag. <laughs> do you just try to throw the bags into the hat, Mr. Witherall? Yes, that's the whole object of the game. Mm. Uh, no significance in it being my hat. Mm. Want to try it? Bean bag? Now? Very silly for a man who looks like Shakespeare. Oh, I'd suggest you try it too, Mr. Wick. We might all play a game. We'll take our minds off this crime. Or is there someone who's too nervous to play? I'm not. Well, I've nothing to worry about. I'll play. So will I. Fine. I'll start, eh? Now, here she goes. Ah, perfect. Didn't even touch the rim. One point for me. Oh, Miss Wick, watching? Loretta. Hmm? Oh, yes, sorry, I'm watching. You seem rather distracted. Wouldn't you be if someone you loved had just been killed? Yes, or if I discovered someone I loved was a crook and had lied to me. Are you implying that my daughter had something to do with Dandy's murder? Anyone could have, couldn't they, Mr. Wick? Anyone here? Uh, my second shot, pardon me. Oh, oh. Loretta never even dreamed of killing Dandy. One point and one miss for me. Oh, yes. Uh, she never dreamed of it, but then uh, the information that he was a criminal could have been extremely infuriating. Will you stop that? Why don't you just play beanbag with her all and stop playing detective? That's all I'm doing, Mr. Button. Uh, Mr. Wick, uh, try a couple of shots. No, oh, I'm not very good at this sort of thing. Oh, come on, try it anyway. All right. Here goes. <laughs> What's the matter, Wick? You nervous? My hat's over there. Well, I think he's just a bad shot. Try another one, eh? But uh, I'm no good at it. Oh, hurry up. I'm waiting for my turn. Well, 
All right. <laughs> way off, Mr. Wick, way off. Ah, uh, he's hopeless. Let me try it. Well, it's my turn, Ned. Lady, you can wait. Well. Okay. Ah. Bullseye. Now, the next one. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Oh, something wrong, Miss Wick? You've got to stop playing this game. You've got to. I can't stand this. Well, what's got into her? If we stop now, I'll never get my turn. Oh, don't. Please, don't play anymore. Incredible. That bean bags should be so nerve-wracking. Uh, you respond to all sports with uh, equal sensitivity? It's just too grotesque. Playing a children's game with a murdered man in the house. Very well. If it's so upsetting to you, we'll give it up. Suppose we go to our respective rooms and wait for the police. Come on, Dad. Let's go. I'll be in my room if you want me. You going upstairs with her on? Yes, I can. My daughter and I will be in our rooms when the police come. Strange man. Playing beanbag. We'll go upstairs too, Mr. Mullet. Then I'm coming down. Alone. Why? <laughs> like this place anymore, Mr. Witherall. It's always kind of spooky here at night. But now with a dead man stabbed in the back, I think you should just lock yourself up in your room till the police come. No, I've been threatened by everybody involved, Mrs. Mullet. I've no other choice. I've got to get at the bottom of this. Besides, it's ruining my vacation. Oh, what's that? Oh, just one of our friends closing his door. Now, I'm going to sneak downstairs and look at the records of this resort. Are they so important? The minute I see those records, I'll know who killed Mr. Dandy. Now, uh, I don't want to be seen. Uh, know where the hall light switch is? Yes, I do. Well, turn out all the lights. There. That's it. Now, uh, see. Wait. What's that? Oh, just the wind. Sounds like someone wailing in agony. Now, Mrs. Mullet, you're talking like a character in my hazel time stories. Agony or not, I'm going down. The desk where the records are is right at the bottom of the stairs. I know. Hmm. So far, so good. Now, where are those files? Oh. <laughs> I, I didn't. I, I was struck over the head. With, with this, I guess. That bean bag? Why, it's loaded. Feel it? My. Someone probably threw it at me. But it might have killed you. Mm, yes. Quite a good deal of expert throwing is being done tonight. Hmm. Now let me see those files. Aha. Some pages have been torn off. Mm. Well, there's only one chance left. Let me see this uh, list of guests. 1943, 1942, 1940. I see. Oh, Mrs. Mullet, I feel a bit dizzy. Uh, would you take that telephone and make a call for me? Well, sure. Who do you want to speak to? Oh, I want long distance. Mr. Paul Scoot, Omaha, Nebraska. Numbers uh, Greenfield 986. Who in the world is he? What's he got to do with it? Well, his name and address and phone are here in the records. He was a guest in 1940. Operator, long distance, please. Now, it's very important I speak to Mr. Scoot. But why do you... Oh, excuse me. Long distance? I want Omaha, Nebraska. Greenfield, 986. This is roadside 7, 2367. Yes, I'll wait. Mr. Witherall, why do you want this, Mr. Scoot? He's going to tell me who the murderer is. A man who isn't here at all? A man in Nebraska? Do you feel we are, Mr. Witherall? Uh, a bit shaky. Yes, it's what a thought. Calling someone in Nebraska to ask them who did the killing tonight. 
Oh, hello. Just a minute. Hold on. Here. Oh, uh, Mr. Scoot, uh, this is strange, I know, calling you long distance this hour. Uh, my name is Leonidas Witherall. I'm calling from Dandy's Dream Domicile. Uh, you were here once, weren't you? Uh, yes. Well, I wanted to ask you a question. Now, it's terribly important. Tell me, uh, did you ever play beanbag? Ma, you are busy. No, no, this isn't a joke, Mr. Scoot. Uh, who'd you play with? Uh-huh. And who won? Poor Mr. Witherall. I see. Yes, yes. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Well, Mrs. Mullet, I have the information I wanted. Now, don't you think you'd better lie down till the police come? No, uh, now I'm going swimming. Swimming? You must have been beamed, all right. Oh. Police come yet, Little O? You hear from them? Uh, no, Mr. Button, but it was warm upstairs. Yeah, the the wick's on his way down, too, with his daughter. Oh, I guess yeah. they're kind of restless. Anything new? I wish this was all over. Well, I just thought of a new way to relax. Another game? No, I'm going out on the lake uh, for a moonlight swim. Ah, you're a fool. Only a nitwit would go swimming now. Just the same I'm going. I want to see if my swimming's any better or any worse. Uh, never was good. Can't you uh, swim? Well, unfortunately, Mr. Wick, my swimming's atrocious. You know, I I'm helpless in the water. But I understand Mr. Dandy has a supply of water wings. So I'll have a go at it. I don't think you should do it. Well, I, I won't go out very far. It's so awfully right. dangerous to go swimming where you can't swim. Yes, yeah, so it is. Very dangerous. I'll stand here on the dock, Mr. Witterall. You call help if you have any trouble. Water wings on tight? Yes, all right. Perfect. Here goes. Be careful, don't go out too far. Well, I'm safe with these water wings. Don't worry. Oh, I can hardly see ya. Ooh, water. Marvelous. You might catch cold. Ever think of that? I said you might catch cold. Can you hear me? <laughs> Mr. Bitterall, what was that? Water wings all right? I could see them like white sticks before, but I can't see them now. I can't see anything out there. Did you see he's drowning? Yes. He went out with water wings. I could see him. And then there was kind of a funny noise, like a like a balloon breaking. And I couldn't see the wings anymore. I couldn't even see him. He must have gone under. And he can't swim. Well, is, uh, is there a boat around? I can't swim well enough to rescue anyone. Oh, you hear that? It's the police. Oh, never mind the police. Mr. Witherall's drowning. Well, someone's got to help him. I'll look at the other side of the beach house. I think I saw some news. All right, here's the police. Maybe they can pull him out. Bob, Willie, fellas down out there. Go get it. Right, just get me caught off. Oh, Officer, glad to see you. You're just in time. You're you're what? Where did you come from? We thought you were drowning out there. We got a call. Someone's been murdered. Who was it? Where is he? Well, his, his name's Dandy, Officer. He's in the kitchen. I'll get a towel. Stand in there in that dripping bathing suit and don't put that knife in your mouth. Uh, need my hands to wring out this suit. How'd you get back up here in the dark without our seeing you? Swam underwater to the other side of the landing. Then you can swim? Huh? Oh, uh, officer, uh, you'll be interested in this knife. I'll take it. Now, that's my letter opener. But I, I thought it was... Sticking in Mr. Dandy's body, uh, Mr. Button? It was. How'd you get it? It was thrown at me while I was out in the lake by the same person who killed Mr. Dandy. Well, the idea was to puncture my water wing. Thinking I was unable to swim, the killer thought I'd drown. The knife would be lost in the water, and my death would be called uh, an accident. Water wings broke, they'd say. Very neat trick. Who did throw that knife? Oh, the champion. It would take a wonderfully controlled hand to throw a knife as beautifully as the one that did away with Mr. Dandy and the loaded bean bag that knocked me unconscious before. Knocked you unconscious? Matter of fact... The shot that just punctured those wings was pretty marvelous, wasn't it? Mm, marvelous. Come on, tell us. Who was it? Now, when we played beanbag tonight... Beanbag? What's that got to do with it? Well, when we played, I was looking for someone who'd be very poor at the game. But you said you were looking for a champion. Precisely. But would the champ advertise his skill? No. He or she'd be anxious to conceal it. I noticed who was particularly bad and then checked up. I thought the club records would list great athletic achievements for each season. What'd you find? 
Well, I was interrupted in my research, and the pages I needed were torn out. Uh, but when I revived, I realized that I didn't need them after all. Now, all I had to do was to call someone who'd been a guest in recent years. They'd know the name of our missing champion. So I telephoned a very obliging gentleman in Nebraska. He told me. Who was the champion? You know very well what the name was, Miss Wick. She killed Andy. With my letter open, to pin the blame on me. She didn't do it, Mr. Button. The father did. Mr. Wick. You can't prove a thing. You haven't any evidence. Thank your pardon. I just handed the evidence to the officer. This letter opener, huh? Yes. You'll find uh, Mr. Wick's fingerprints on it, officer. After it hit my wings, I dove down and retrieved it. Fingerprints don't come off in the water, you know, Mr. Wick. Very nice, Witherall. Let's go, Wick. My boys will take care of the corpse. Go in the kitchen, fellas. Mr. Wick, uh, I'm surprised at you. Uh, you shouldn't have fallen for my trap. It was so obvious. Trap? Yes, uh, the swimming. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm a champ myself. Get in my car, Wick. You come too, Witherall. You rate all the credit. Oh, I don't want any credit, officer. I just want to... What? To finish my swim. I came here for a vacation, didn't I? Anybody want to see me do a swan dive? You have been listening to the distinguished American actor, Walter Hampton, in the adventures of Leonidas Witherall. Oh, <laughs>